Kim Fusler was up on PBS yesterday, and he claimed that 7,000 becquerels of potassium-40 in the drinking water was the standard for cesium in your water. In fact, the real experts are certain the amount of cesium in the plume is not and will not be a threat to marine or human health 5,000 miles from Fukushima. If we get up to about seven uh, becquerels per cubic meter, that's beyond what I'm actually expecting. That would be a thousand times less than what we're allowed to have in our drinking water. Now, I do want to put this in perspective from health safety. I'm not a, a health physicist by any stretch, but I do want to point out, and I'll go back to, you know, there are about 12 becquerels of potassium-40 in bananas. There are levels of concern for drinking water in the U.S. It's about 8,000 in those units. So they have a regulatory limit of about 90,000. So they're allowed by law to put up to about 90,000 becquerels per cubic meter of cesium in the ocean by the operating license of TEPCO. Our plants have similar things. They're allowed to have certain levels in the ocean. That's because these are considered safe and for drinking water. Now, Ken, in a previous lecture, had made this startling claim about cesium-137 will turn into potassium-40. This is a prediction from the Japanese of where the cesium would go if it was released here after the accident, out for about a month. This is going to keep looping pretty quickly, but it'll stop here on April 30th and go back to March. And we were using information like this to decide where we would go in the uh, early June to sample these isotopes. The thing about this, uh, that potassium-40 uh, is here at about 12,000, the natural isotopes. So these are getting to points where they're not of direct health concern. When we were out there in June, we weren't concerned about our exposure, even though we were measuring that to be damn sure. So why would he equate cesium-137 with potassium-40 that was coming out of Fukushima? And potassium-40 is just indigenous, harmless background radiation. On February 22, 2012, on the BBC, Ken Vusler says, just because we can measure radioactivity doesn't mean it's harmful. Ken Vusler. Well, if you go for the guidelines, for drinking water quality, you can find up on page 208 why this is such a difficult thing to measure. It is impractical to use a radioactive measuring technique to determine the concentration of potassium-40 in a water sample due to the lack of sensitivity in the gamma-ray analysts and the difficulty of chemically isolating the radionuclides from solution. Well, when you come down here, you can see what they're up to. They say the researchers looked at plankton and fish back then, and the concentration of potassium-40 was five to six times greater than all of the elements. How did they work that one out? It's impractical, right? From Fukushima combined. Five to six times greater than all the elements from Fukushima combined. Well, potassium-40 has got nothing to do with Fukushima. It's got nothing to do with it. And they go to some really heavy-duty lengths to drive that point out or that it does. In, in fact, they say the maximum protected radiation levels, and this was an article uh, a couple days ago, Scott Sutherland on Yahoo News, uh, Thursday the 27th, February 2014. And you can see the dispersal model they use to trick people with. They say the maximum predictable predicted radiation levels of Fukushima across the Pacific North was 27 becquerels per cubic meter of water. If we took that water, pour it out enough to tip the scale at a kilogram, and then put it beside a kilogram of white potatoes, for example, they say, we would find that the potatoes emit 4,600 times the amount of radiation that was detected in the water. And they're talking about the cesium, 137, 134. You can't use potassium in these equations. So it's an outrageous lie because potassium-40 has nothing to do with weaponized military industrial isotopes. It really doesn't. Potassium-40, the guidelines for the drinking water, you off-gas it as you drink it. Homeostasis is a basic idea in biology, and what it is is an organism's ability to keep a constant internal balance no matter what's going on in the environment. Now, 
this sometimes is hard to understand in the beginning, but once you get it, it makes a lot of biology very simple. And it After 7,000 becquerels in that glass, you off-gas 7,000 becquerels potassium-40. If you eat a banana with 12 becquerels potassium-40, you off-gas it. And it's the property of a system in which variables are regulated so the internal conditions remain stable. So in other words, I call it off-gassing. It's, it's a concept that uh, examples are, you know, heaters turn on and off, they regulate the temperature, air conditioners go by sensors, cruise control, autopilots, um, there's all kinds of stuff that works on that. Potassium-40 has nothing to do with it, okay? In fact, um, a 70 kilogram human body contains 160 grams of potassium, and produces about 4,900 disintegrations per second. If you were letting out 4,900 disintegrations a second of cesium-137 and 134, you know, you would be the most contaminated person in your country. Potassium-40, this is how they're muddling the water. They show you these plumes, right? They don't show you any red whatsoever, just a little dot back there. It's been hemorrhaging into the ocean nonstop non-stop folks non-stop look do yourself a favor go over to ENE news and type in uh, CCM 137 hit enter and wait for the page load scroll right down to the bottom all the way to the bottom go to the last page and go to the bottom of that page when it pops up. Come on, Mr. Pagey. Go down to the bottom of that page and then work your way backwards. You got 19 pages. Radioactive cloud hits the U.S. carrier. That was March the 14th, 2011. Uh, they got about a month's worth of radiation in an hour they were reporting back then. But remember, things have changed. The information comes out. Radioactive releases may continue for a year. March the 14, 2011, they were saying that. Worse than a meltdown, spent nuclear fuel pool catches fire. March the 15th. And you can just link over to all of these stories and come back through it, and you can actually understand it. But if you're going to look 80 times more iodine-131 allowed in drinking water, now are they talking about the 7,000 Beckwells that people like Ken Buesler talks about? Most likely, the see? experts are certain the amount of cesium in the plume is not and will not be a threat to marine or human health 5,000 miles from Fukushima. If we get up to about seven uh, becquerels per cubic meter, that's beyond what I'm actually expecting. That would be a thousand times less than what we're allowed to have in our drinking water. That's how the game is played. 142,000 times more iodine. Can you see where I'm going with this? Okay. Or you can come up here and you can type in ocean. And once again, a little slow here, let it load up. This page is really fast. Come down to the bottom up and go to the last page. Okay? And now you're back into March 2011 itself. Now come backwards from there, and you got yourself 35 pages of links. And I'm pretty sure that if you tried, you know, the Belgium Institute for space, puts out a radioactive cloud threats. Uh, this was a really interesting story. Radioactive rain over the Pacific will save lives. They were talking about putting regions, chemtrailing regions, over the Pacific Ocean, knock the radioactive fallout out of the sky, folks. Uh, 3,355 3, times legal limits of radioactive iodine found in seawater. Remember, can't have iodine without the iodine-132, 133, but you can't have any of it without the cesium. You can't have that without 30 times more strontium. You can't have that without uranium. You can't have that without plutonium and all its daughters, you know, 238, 239, 240, 241. And all of it's here, but I recommend you do it that way. Go to the bottom of the page each time and go up the page, come back, click back down and click the next one. Go to the bottom of that page, come back up. And so you're getting it by date as it happened, as the stories came out and you can keep track of how things happen and the progress of it, okay? Canadian radiation test shows iodine-131 in rainwater at almost 100 times above U.S. drinking water limits, which is 7,000 to 9,000.
You know, there are about 12 becquerels of potassium-40 in bananas. There are levels of concern for drinking water in the U.S. It's about 8,000 in those units. They have a regulatory limit of about 90,000. So they're allowed by law to put up to about 90,000 becquerels per cubic meter of cesium in the ocean by the operating license of TEPCO. Our plants have similar things. They're allowed to have certain levels in the ocean. That's because these are considered safe. Now, Ken, in a previous lecture, had made this startling claim about cesium-137 will turn into potassium-40. This is a prediction from the Japanese of where the cesium would go if it was released here after the accident out for about a month. This is going to keep looping pretty quickly, but it'll stop here in April 30th and go back to March. And we were using information like this to decide where we would go in the uh, early June to sample these isotopes. The thing about this, uh, that potassium-40 uh, is here at about 12,000, the natural isotopes. So these are getting to points where they're not of direct health concern when we were out these there. These are the people June. at the top of the chain getting interviewed by the BBC and Yahoo and everybody else and put out there for everybody to look to, and they can't even get their story straight, and all they got to do is come over here and go through the whole friggin' thing. I'm not the bad guy here. I'm just saying that enough, this is enough. Ken Dussel is out there to every uni university, every institution, telling our children and our loved ones m absolutely lies that potassium-40 is somehow equivalent to cesium-133. you got to use your voices. You gotta, you gotta let these people know that's not acceptable for a PBS to be putting Ken Buesler up there without fact checking it. Is that asking too much? Is that a crime to have your media fact check it? Apparently so. I know, I'm yelling. We'll see you tonight, folks. Take care.